Good morning, everybody. We haven't done one of these in a really long time. I'm going to add this to the Facebook page. What is going on here? There it is. Whee! It's super hot out here. I'm sure you guys know that. Um, just adding this to the Facebook page. Oh, it takes me a second. If it would post. That way you guys can get on and enjoy. My dogs are all over me already. But you guys can't really see them. They're out protecting the yard. And I'll post it on Sanford. Whee! All right, we should be good to go. And I'm talking to myself, but that's okay, because you guys can watch this later, right? So, um, been a while since we've done this, uh, but I'm going to jump right into it, and we'll go from there. So, you guys are all probably familiar with uh, heartworm treatment and how we always treat pups for heartworms. Um and not every shelter does that. That's something unique. Pet Alliance does. Um, Orange County has a sponsorship program you guys may have heard of, um, which we kind of help out with that because their pets can get seen by us and it's a discounted rate and all this good stuff. So we do still help out our partners over at Orange County. Um, so heartworm disease, what is it? In case you guys don't know, it's a serious disease that results in severe lung disease, heart failure, other organ damage and death in pets, mainly dogs, cats, and ferrets. It is caused by a parasitic worm called Dyrophilaria imitis. I, I don't know if I butchered that. The words worms are spread through the bite of a mosquito. So we live in Florida. There's lots of mosquitoes. That's why we always harp on keeping your dogs up to date on their heartworm prevention. Um, it's something not to take lightly. You guys should be giving it every month if you're not in you don't see the point of it. Uh, you might see the point of it afterwards, but I think everybody understands the importance of keeping your doggies on prevention, especially down here in Florida. Um, other states, they might not do it year round, like uh, where it's super cold during the winter months. So like in Washington, it might only be over the summer months and mos with mosquitoes around there. Um, what else is going, but really it's not that they're going to, a lot of people get heartworm confused. So it's not something that you're gonna see in their stool samples or anything like that. Um, it is a long disgusting worm that kind of looks like spaghetti. Um, it kind of wraps itself around the heart and lungs um, and then slowly suffocates dogs or cats. It's not as common in cats because um, most kitties uh, are inside kitties. Um, it's just not as common. So the Signs of heartworm disease may include mild persistent cough, reluctance to exercise, fatigue after moderate activity, decreased appetite, and weight loss. As heartworm disease progresses, pets may develop heart failure and the appearance of a swollen belly due to excessive fluid in the abdomen. So it takes at least six months for a dog to test positive. So that's why uh, we don't test puppies until they're six months old. Fun fact. Um, so you will never see a heartworm test. I mean, you might, I guess it'd be rare, but really there is no point in testing dogs, um, until they are six months old. Um, and we're still going here. Hang on. Sorry about that. Let's see. Um, there are larger positive cases in the Atlantic and Gulf Coast regions. Of course, again, because it gets so darn hot here, it's hard all, all year round. Um, it's probably more common in places like Puerto Rico, um, the Caribbean, and all that kind of stuff, too. So basically, hot climates, we have to keep our pups on prevention year round. All right, so how? Um, every dog is tested uh, when they come through receiving. So when a dog comes in, we always run a heartworm test. Um, that's why our appointments are a little bit longer because it's not as simple as just waltzing right in and leaving your dog or cat, um, especially with dogs. And the dogs are going crazy in the background. There you go. As always, entertaining. Schooner's up on the trampoline. So <laughs> there you go. Um, so the test is done through drying blood and um, it's placed on the SNAP test. It takes roughly 10 minutes for results to come through. Um, if they are positive, shelter vets will then take x-rays. X-rays show what stage the disease is. 
uh, and help determine the best course of treatment. Really, um, excuse me, sorry. Um, while undergoing treatment, dogs must only go on leash walks for exercise and remain as calm as possible, which sounds really difficult and hard to do, um, but people do it and their dogs come out better for it on the other side. So that's why we really um, stress when we have those signs out there for you guys that say leash walk only, heartworm positive. You guys really need to follow that. I know it's really tempting to want to take a dog out into an exercise yard, um, but take them on a walk. They love walks. They get to sniff everything. They're outside. They're enjoying this lovely muggy air where it's 83 degrees, but the real feel is 95. Um, but they really like the outside. So make sure you guys pay attention to those uh, signs when we have them. Um, so typical course of action, um, starts with doxycycline. Uh, the dog will take that for 30 days and then 30 days after that has finished, uh, the dog will receive the first treatment. Um, sometimes people like to, uh, say that the treatment for dogs is, um, kind of like going through chemo through humans. So it's not an easy thing. It takes a lot out of them. It makes them feel miserable. Um, so that's why it's so tough. So they do the first treatment and then 30 days after that first treatment, they actually do back to back treatment. So sometimes our shelter dogs will come in and spend the night for those second and third treatments. Um, if you're going to a vet clinic, you'll have to go two days in a row. And then at the nine month mark, the dog will undergo another heartworm test. Um, if they are negative, they can run free in the backyard and go on runs and run through the house and jump on the couch and jump on your countertops and jump on the trampoline or whatever else it is that you guys let your doggies do. Um, and then there's also a slow kill method. So slow kill, uh, we don't really believe in. Maybe some people do, but it's basically just putting the dog on prevention. Personally, I would treat my dog, but um, it's less effective. Um, and that's by the A. AHS and may not eliminate all worms even after 18 months or more of treatment during the lengthy waiting period. The worm in the dog's body will continue to damage the heart, lungs, and pulmonary vascular so um, arteries. So that is why we highly recommend going through treatment. Um, so prevention, get your test dog tested every 12 months to ensure they are heartworm negative. If you miss a, a dose, then you have to go get tested again because there is a chance that your dog could test positive for heartworms and it's only been a month because again there's mosquitoes running rampant all over the place um always give heart pre heartworm prevention heart guard trifexis every month it's you can put a reminder in your phone you can write it on a chalkboard on a whiteboard around your house um let's see test your pups starting at six months of age start prevention at two months you do not need a prescription for heartworm medication or you do need, sorry, I was like, I'm reading that wrong. You need a prescription for heartworm medication. So you do have to be seen by a vet. Um, or if you're adopting from us, you can buy it at the time of adoption. Um, there's no over-the-counter or natural method that prevents heartworms. So it's very important to keep them on treatment. So Pet Alliance does treat all of their doggies that come out heartworm positive. Um, a sticker is placed on their car kennel card letting owners know that the dog is heartworm positive. Sometimes it can be a deterrent. Um, sometimes those dogs' uh, fees get waived. Um, bark buddies are given a rundown of heartworm disease and what happens during treatment um, when we do our training. And if we don't, then we can always go over it with you. Um, adopters are given details about heartworm disease and treatment. Um, so we always tell adopters, we're going to treat your pet. You just have to commit to coming back on this date and this date. And we also do call back reminders if they miss it. Um, and then let's see, we can't force adopters to come back. Unfortunately, uh, we do have, we tested 88 dogs for heartworm and, or we treated 88 dogs for heartworm in 2019. So that's pretty good, uh, numbers. Um, so it's not, we do see some people that don't show back up for heartworm treatment. Um, but it's, it's a good thing. Um, all right. So that is heartworm treatment in a nutshell. Why do we treat it? Because it gets dogs adopted. It saves their lives. Um, a lot of people, if they had to shell out the cost, because the cost is close to $1,000, if not more, depending on where you go, um, they wouldn't adopt the pet knowing that. So when we say, oh, we'll, we'll eat that cost. And that's also why, um, if you ever have talked to our customer care specialist, if you ask why puppies are more expensive, it is so... Uh, we can treat our heartworm positive animals in the shelter. 
and the dogs are in the background running around. None of my dogs were ever heartworm positive. Thankfully, they are in their cabana of the trampoline. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed watching them being crazy. Um, so dentals. Dentals is another thing. So what is a dental? Um, so when there is rough tartar accumulated on tooth surfaces and touches the gum line, it's time for professional oral assessment, treatment, and prevention visit. I'm going to say probably right around the five-year mark, most dogs are going to need dentals. Um, my doggies chew on Nyla bones and dentistics all the time. I don't know. Hops is going to be four on Sunday. So she's almost there. Um, so dental. A dental exam um, is done to confirm if a dental cleaning is needed. Um, your vet will review with you what procedures are likely required prior to the dental cleaning. Uh, your veterinarian may perform blood tests to ensure that kidney and liver functions are okay for anesthesia, as well as an evaluation of heart and abdomen um, if needed. And um, so that's what we do too in the shelter. So when Dr. A does her vet checks and everything, if she notices a dog needs a dental, she will recommend it. Um, so anesthesia is important to allow a tooth by a tooth examination and including dental x-rays. Um, so a dental cleaning visit will include a thorough dental examination, teeth cleaning and polishing to remove the tartar and periodical disease causing plaque. Um, this is done while your dog is under general anesthesia. Once under the anesthesia, your vet will help, with the help of vet assistants, will thoroughly examine the mouth, no any abnormalities in um, the medical record. A dental probe will be used to evaluate gum bleeding and periodontal pockets where food can accumulate and decay if not properly cared for. So I can also say um, that after being at Alafea, they always look at the teeth and examine the pet before they do surgery. So if they see a pet that we have that needs their teeth pulled or not, might need a cleaning, we might, won't necessarily do the dental cleaning, but we do pull teeth fairly regularly. Um, usually the ones that are baby teeth that haven't fallen out by now. Um, when periodontal disease is advanced, it may not be possible to save the badly affected teeth, which may need to be extracted and either during the procedure or a later time. After a thorough examination of your dog's mouth, tooth scaling will be performed using both hand and ultrasonic scalers to remove plaque and tartar above and below. There goes, oh, they're both up there. Skinner and Triple are up on the trampoline. Poor Hops is underneath. Um, and below the gum line, the tartar below the gum line causes the most significant periodontal disease. So it's important that it be thoroughly removed. After scaling, the teeth are polished to remove microscopic scratches and decrease the rate of subsequent plaque buildup. So a lot of the time they have to go under anesthesia because dogs hate the sound of all those crazy tools. Um, it's not like us going to get our teeth cleaned, although I'm sure some of us do hate dentals. Um, I, for one, don't mind the dentist one bit, but um, it's not bad. So prevention, how can you prevent your dogs getting tartar buildup? Um, I don't think the trampoline helps, though Schooner is doing his daily laps on the trampoline and he's super pumped about it. Uh, so prevention, uh, a home dental care program, including regular tooth brushing is a must. I don't know about you guys, but my dogs hate the toothbrush. I usually have to hu hug them and brush their teeth. Sometimes I end up just putting the toothpaste on there. Um, watching what's happening in the background on the screen is pretty darn funny. I hope you guys are enjoying the talks. Um, the Veterinary Oral Health Council, Council only accepts dental products that are safe and proven to reduce the accumulation of plaque and tartar based on strict scientific studies. A list of accepted products can be viewed at vohc.org and your veterinary can advise you as well. Do not use human toothpaste. Don't use it. Don't use human toothpaste. If I didn't just say it, if you didn't hear me, don't use human toothpaste. Use dog toothpaste. That's why they make it. They make it for a reason. Human toothpaste is for humans. We should not be ingesting it anyway. We spit it out. Doggies don't want to eat that either, or they might want to eat it, but then you might have um, some fun vet bills in your future. Um, pet toothpaste are non-foaming, safe to be swallowed, and are available in flavors that are appealing to your dogs, including poultry, beef, malt, and mint. Um, so if you're using something that tastes good, they're most likely, more likely to let you brush, brush, brush and go to town. Um, and then your doggy can enjoy the whole experience. Um, sadly, you cannot use peanut butter to brush your dog's teeth, even though I wish we all could, because then it would be super easy. 
Um, use a toothbrush made for dogs. So again, don't use a human product. They make these dog products for a reason. So make sure you guys are using those. Um, brush your dog's teeth when they are calm and relaxed. Um, I went and sneak attack triple, uh, not that this has to do with teeth brushing, um, but with the clippers the other day and she didn't even fight me for it. Hi, trippies. I need to finish mowing my lawn too, in case you guys didn't see it got a haircut, but I couldn't finish. Thanks, Rain. Um, don't stand above your dog, hold her down, or take a threatening stance. So that's why I sit next to mine. I said sometimes I have to squeeze them to hold them in place, but it's okay. Try kneeling or sitting in front of them um, or on the side. Gauge your dog's anxiety level. If they seem upset, stop and try again later. Or you can always give them treats while you're sitting there with a the toothbrush. Let them smell it before you put that thing in their mouth. Um, and then test your dog's willingness to have you touch her his or her mouth by rubbing your finger along the gum line. Uh, this will help the dog get used to feeling something against their teeth. Um, use light pressure. You may need to get comfortable over a few sessions before moving on. So you might have to do this step by step. It might not happen just like magic. Um, and then you can always do use your finger first um, before you actually use a toothbrush. And you can let the dog lick the toothpaste um, so they can get used to that flavor as well. Um when a pup is used to opening and touching their mouth, start using the toothpaste and toothbrush together. Lift up their upper lip as you approach teeth with the brush. Angle the bristles so that they reach the gum line. Placing them at a 45 degree angle will help the bristle massage bristles, massage the gum line and clear away plaque. Sorry, a lot of this I don't have memorized off the top of my head, guys, so I'm reading it. Um, brush in small circles, getting top and bottom on each side. As you move the bristles along the gum line, some light bleeding may occur. Slight bleeding every so often is okay, but ongoing or heavy bleeding may mean that you're brushing too aggressively or it may be a sign of gum disease. So speak with your vet for advice if you're getting continual bleeding from your pup when you're trying to brush their teeth. Um, brush a few at a time, working up to each more each day. Aim for two minutes total. If your dog resists at first, try starting on the outside of the canine back teeth where plaque tends to collect. If you can get the insides, great. But if you can't get to them, don't stress too much because that tongue will help to keep that area clean. Um, keep the mood light while you're brushing your dog's teeth. So if I was talking to Triple, I'd be like, Trippies, come here. Triple, come here, come here. Let's brush your teeth. Let's brush your teeth. Look at these chompers. Look at these chompers. They're so clean. Um, so nylon bones or hard rubber bones are also helpful for keeping plaque away. Um, so are dentist sticks or any of those fun little teeth products. Greenies are cost of arm and a leg. That's why I usually use dentist sticks. Or if we have treats at the shelter, I usually buy all our dental treats there. But we haven't had any in a really long time. Uh, but my dogs love dentals dentist sticks. They love their Nyla bones. Uh, they love when I step on their Nyla bones in the middle of the night. I don't really know if they do, but they like to leave them out. Huh? All right. So what do we do at Pet Alliance? So Pet Alliance treats all dogs that come in needing a dental. Um, if it's too severe and teeth extraction are needed, the shelter will perform the extractions and dental prior to adoption. Um, if it's a mild need, Pet Alliance will offer, offer a follow-up dental at a discounted rate of 75. So I don't know if you guys have ever gotten your dog's done for dentals, but $75 is a banging deal uh, because it's super cheap and discounted. Um, so that's why we offer it to adopters. Um, adoption counselors go over the importance of dental care at the time of adoption if with all dental candidates. Um, they won't sit there and tell that to everybody because if we talked to everybody through everything that they needed to know, we would be there for hours and hours and we wouldn't get as many doggies adopted. Um, so that's why we do this kind of stuff with you guys. So you can know and be knowledgeable. And if anybody asks any questions about dentals, which I'm sure it's probably the same for kitties, we don't see as many kitties needing dentals and things like that. Um, but when we have them, we do them too. Um, so Pet Alliance does these treatments to give dogs a happy and healthy life. Um, it's also, again, one of those things where it's a better chance of them being adopted um, because some people don't enjoy stinky breath of dogs. Um, and we get to educate the public. So um, we do this stuff again. Uh, we have higher adoption rates for puppies so we can do dentals at discounted rates and do those crazy treatments for um, heartworm positive dogs. So what did we learn today, everybody? 
keep your dogs on prevention, brush your dog's teeth. Uh, even if you have to step on Nyla bones in the middle of the night, buy some Nyla bones for your dogs. Um, I'm thinking it's the same thing for kitties. Make sure they have stuff to chew on, keep those teeth clean. Um, I'm, I don't want to imagine trying to brush a cat's teeth. Maybe sometimes it's okay. I don't know what you guys do with them. Um, but anyways, hopefully you guys learned some stuff and, uh, have an awesome Tuesday. Whoop, whoop. Uh, does anybody have any questions before I sign off here? I know the dogs were probably a little more entertaining than the topic of this, but I will also be jumping on tomorrow because we have people going back to the shelter and I'm pumped about it. So hopefully, uh, whoever's watching right now, I'll see you guys then. And if not, you can always catch this again later. All right, everybody take care.